Well, good morning, everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead on porch time today. Got a lovely morning this morning. Temperatures dropped back into the 60s. I mean, we were at 105 heat index. <laughs> now we're back at 67 degrees this morning. I thought that was just, I mean, it's like a wonderful for one to nine, you know. Uh, the corn is actually pulled out of the drought that it was in. We got just a little bit of rain uh, that helped out on that a lot. We're picking our snap beans, if you want to call them that. We call them our 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 trans beans. Let me let me say that because they're a mixture of all kinds of beans. Uh, we still don't know about the ones we planted in the high tunnel yet. Whether they're going to be true Kentucky Wonder yellow wax beans or not, but we're actively waiting. They're coming up now, so it'd be it'll be a little while on them. Can't jump the gun on that one. But, uh, guys, the, the weather we've been having has been just unreal heat. And, and I, made a, I, I did a video on Patreon talking about this. Heat and evil go together. Evil has a lot to do with heat. The more evil we get the hotter it's going to become. Now, I know everybody goes, well, I thought we was going into a grand solar minimum. We was going to all turn into a mini ice age. If that's what you believe, you miss the ball completely. The grand solar minimum is not about turning to ice. The grand solar minimum is about weather extremes. I have told and told people, when it's hot, it's going to be extremely hot. When it's cold, it's going to be extremely cold. When it's wet, it's going to be extremely wet. When it's dry, it's going to be dust bowl drought. I mean, when the weather's bad, it's going to be extremely bad. When the weather's beautiful, it's going to be extremely beautiful. I mean, you, it's, it's extremes when we have things happen. And yes, there is a planetary system coming into our solar system that is going to play havoc on our earth. We know in the book of Isaiah, it tells us that, um, I believe it was Isaiah, I've been, I've been doing so much research here lately and study, it's, some things may run over onto the other. Uh, but it talks about the earth being real to and fro. Literally, it's going to and fro. And that's because of magnetic pulls. And something has to cause this magnetic pull. And this planetary system that's coming into our solar system right now is actually already doing that to other planets out there. And the earth is it's going to happen to the earth too. God tells us it's going to happen. It literally tells us that every mountain will be moved out of its place. So there's going to be cataclysmic events that happen that's literally going to move every mountain out of its place. Now, does that mean it's going to literally be picked up and moved? No. It doesn't mean it's literally going to be picked up and moved. It means geo geologically or geographically speaking, it's going to be moved from where its normal location is on a map. And we're already seeing that because the North Pole is constantly moving. And everything is having to be reprogrammed. Uh, airports are having to reprogram equipment and stuff like this. Because the true magnetic north is, is moving. They've got to recalibrate instruments and stuff like that. So we see all types of things are happening, guys, all around us. And I did the, I did the video last week on porch time, you know, talking about what is it going to take to open your eyes? Man, I got so many emails from that. It was like, whoa. You know, Wanda told me, she's like, we got flooded with them. And I was, some really great ones. I looked through what I could because I don't have a lot of time. Right now, I'm in full, blown out mode, getting us beyond a certain point to be able to survive. There's things coming that even the most prepared like us, I mean, we're about as prepared as anybody can get that we're not even going to be able to, you know, cope with. And, and, and I mean, one that I've talked about this. And it's one of those things that, uh, you know, you just do the best you can do. And you have to depend on God 
to take care of the rest. Now, he's not going to do it all for you. you. He's not going to just sit there and hand it out to you. God kicks in once you've done all you can physically do. You know, and, and that's what we have to realize. Now, gosh, i got to figure out how to say this because um, we can't... Let's put it. The only thing I can do is use me for an illustration. Okay. Now the weather's fixing to change. We know that. <laughs> we know that hurricanes are fixing to go from hurricanes to hypercanes. We know that. Uh, there, we have hurricanes coming, and that's going to make Katrina look like a walk in the park. Well, now they're experimenting with dropping aerosol into these tropical lows in order to try to suppress them some, because they know they're coming. They don't want to destroy everything, because they know that if they do, they have nothing to rule over, okay? So, and they don't want everybody dead. Uh, they want a certain amount of us gone, but they don't want everybody dead, because then they'd have to do the work themselves. I mean, you know, they, they, they want a certain amount left. But they know that with the weather that we're fixing to face, that there's going to be cataclysmic damage. Now, with me living here toward the Gulf Coast. I know this. <clears throat> now, the point I'm trying to make is if a storm comes in here and annihilates everything I've got here and I have nothing left, I can't blame anybody but me. Because I, I could have picked up and moved. I could have moved further inland to be away from this. So I really can't sit back and say, well, God was unfair to me. No, God told me it was coming, and I have chosen to stay here. Now, is it going to be bad? Yeah, it's going to be bad. Could I lose it all? Yes, I could lose it all. It's a choice. We all have choices. Does this mean I'm going to always be here? No, it doesn't mean I'm going to always be here. I plan on being here. But if it comes to a point to where it looks like I'm not going to be able to stay here, then, yeah, I'll make a decision. Because I'm really not attached physically or emotionally to anything that I own. I'm just the kind of person that I've had to start over so many times in my life and rebuild until, to me, it's just another thing that you do. I don't want to have to do it. But if I had to, God would just have to give me the strength and the grace to be able to do it. You know, um, I had to laugh this past week. We, our, uh, a great pastor friend of mine is, is working on a pond right here next to him. He's building a pond. The same guy that built mine. He got there that morning, and when he got there, I was already, I, I get up at 4.30 in the morning, by 5 o'clock, I'm out the door. We're blowing and going, you know. And... He pulls up about, I don't know, it must have been around 7.30 or something. And I'm already, I, we've done butchered a ton of chickens and got them in the cooler. I mean, we, we've done pick the garden and we're already doing stuff, other stuff. And he called over here. He said, brother, I don't know what it is that you take over there. He says, I'm coming over there. I want some of whatever you've got. He says, you just as well turn them camera systems off that you got monitoring that property. He said, because I'm fixing to come in there when you ain't home. I'm fixing to find out what you eat. He said, because I ain't never seen nobody that has the energy that you have at your age and keep going like you go. I'm a young man and I can't keep up with you. And I just busted out laughing. You know, I told him, I said, I got Jesus. I got the Lord. And he, he just rolled out laughing. He thought that was great. Um, but, guys, you've got to find joy because joy comes from the Lord okay let's just let's just understand this right off the bat joy doesn't come from owning a barn a cabin a high tunnel of you know a house a land ponds joy doesn't come from that joy comes from the Lord and when we get that into our heads it doesn't matter where we're at read the blessings of obedience you know I, or I encourage people all the time go read the blessings of obedience in Deuteronomy I will bless you in the city. I will bless you in the country. In other words, the Lord says, I don't care where you're at. If you're obedient to me, I'm going to bless you wherever you are. 
Now, for me to say I'm going to live in a city and I'm going to survive in a city, is that a wise thing to do? No. Because, to be honest, most people who live in rural, I mean, live in um, subdivisions and live in cities and apartment dwellers, I mean, yeah, you're, you're going to, you know, I'm not trying to be rude or cruel or anything like that, but your life's going to be really difficult if you make it. I mean, it's, it is like I was talking about me living here next to hurricanes. Knowing that they're coming in, to live inside of a city or, a, or an urban development, uh, a, a apartment complexing or something like that, and you know this is coming, you, you got to take whatever comes, you know? And like me with these hurricanes coming in, I know there's a real good possibility that what I have here will be tore up. And I have to be willing to live with that. I have to be willing to say, <clears throat> I, it might, it, I may die here, you know? And it could, it could, you know, I could get killed by the weather. I could get killed by anything. But we all, we all going to pass away from something. So we're at a point now in our country where we're probably going to have to grow where we're planted. Uh, now, if you, is, is there still time to get out? And is there to, still time to, to do something? If you're financially successful and you have a lot of finances at your disposal right now that you can lay your hands on, you might could pull it off right quick. But probably in about three months from now, I don't think it's going to be possible. Uh, even with large amounts of money, uh, it's going to be difficult to pull it off. I mean... There's already, I, I'm trying to watch because so many, so many channels are getting pulled right now. Uh, and so many videos are getting pulled. Not necessarily the whole channel, but the videos are getting pulled. And they're getting strikes against them. Uh, it's going to be difficult, guys. Because there is a plan. I've looked at it and um, I'm not happy with it. I'm going to say that. Uh, we just, this past week, tried to bless as many people as we could with food. Because we had enough that we could, in surplus, that we could bless people. Because we, we really didn't have any more room for it. So we took it out and we blessed people with it. And uh, they were grateful that we did. Because you see... <clears throat> The simple things in the stores. Uh, I was I was listening to a gentleman talking, who had been to Walmart, and I haven't been to Walmart in a long, long time. Uh, matter of fact, I personally haven't been in a grocery store in quite a while. But this this gentleman was saying that um, eggs had went up forty four percent, which under which which. Explains when I offered these people, I offered one, I offered two different people, like seventy-two eggs each. You know, they jumped on it. They're like, "Yes, we'll take them. Yes, we'll take them." And because I just give them to them, because we had so many, and I didn't want to see them go bad. And I'm not, I, I didn't want to charge anybody. I was like, they just, they can have them. So we gave them the eggs, and I'm like, forty-four percent for eggs. And, they, and one of them told me, said. Some places are seven dollars a dozen. I'm like, for eggs? And he said, yes. Uh, one of my friends that was operating a dozer over here, uh, he and I were talking that morning when he first got there. Uh, I, I walked across the fence because he's a friend of mine, and I was sitting there talking to him as he was greasing his machine. And I told him, I said, it's going to be a hot one today. I said, I hope you brought plenty of water and food to make it through the day. He said, he said, Danny, I stopped at the store this morning to get me something to eat. He said it was going to cost me, for my lunch today, it was going to cost me close to $30. He said, I just passed. He said, I, I, I got some water and a cooler. But he said, I didn't even bring any food today. He said, I'm just going to have to tough it out today. I was like, man, the heat index is over 100 degrees out here. And it... He said, I can't help it. He said, I can't see spending $30 a day on something to eat. He said, I didn't realize it was going to be that expensive. 
he said, maybe tomorrow I can bring something from home and, and, and have something to eat. I was like, that was an eye-opener to me. I was like, $30 for enough food for a meal for the day? I was just like, wow. <laughs> My cows are hollering at me. They're always hollering at me. They want to be fed. They're, they're welfare cows. Um, but guys, this is where we're at. We're not at a point anymore. I mean, I've, I've tried since 2000. I think if you go back to way back down, I don't even remember what year it was. I know in 2019, I've done a whole series on food shortages and food supply and chain breakdowns and stuff like this because I saw it. I knew it was coming. And people sit back and mocked me for several years. They, they was like, oh, there's nothing happening. See, you made all these videos. Nothing's happening. Well... I didn't wait to the last minute to tell somebody. You see, God doesn't do that. God tells his people in advance. Like when Pharaoh had the dream in Egypt of the, of the seven good years and then the seven fat cows and then the seven good years of grain and the seven poor years of grain, the seven years of skinny cows. God told them ahead of time. Gave them time to make provisions. God doesn't wait till the last minute for His people. He tells them years in advance so that they can make preparations for what's coming. You know, I've been criticized. I've been mocked at. I've been laughed at. I've been told I was inaccurate. I've been told, you know, I just let it roll off my back. Because you know what? <clears throat> the people who's saying that's going to be the people who's going to be beating on somebody's door, trying to steal from them or something. You know, because they, they make stupid decisions. The Lord has, has warned us. You can't live in a nation that's as evil as America is right now and literally expect any better. Do you realize how much murder this country has done since the early 60s? of innocent children? I mean, are we actually... Do we actually comprehend that? Do you know what it takes to make evil succeed? It takes innocent blood to satisfy evil. And we have catered to that as a nation. So, all we can expect from this point forward is destruction, famine, starvation, all of these things. There's nothing to stop it now. All we can do is God's people, and it's our fault because we dropped the ball. All we can do now as God's people is fall down on our knees and pray. And ask God to bless our individual families. The, the, the blessing of the nation's over. That's gone. Uh, God's going to judge this nation. Just like he judged Egypt and spared his own people that were in Egypt. We as Christian people will suffer. We will suffer now. I mean, don't get it, don't get me wrong. We're going to suffer. But we can pray that through the plagues and the famines and the pestilences and all the kind of things that's going to come, the droughts and all this kind of stuff, that, that God will deliver us and our families out of all this. We may not have everything we want or everything we need, but we will get by. I mean, I'll give you for instance, people have looked at my corn and I talked about the drought that had hit us really, really bad and we've broken that drought some uh, with all the rain that just came through. Uh, People are like, I don't know why you don't put water up in that pond up there instead of losing all you've got. My ponds were very, very low. Only a fool would go to a low pond where his fish supply is at and pump that water out and put it on dry ground up here and then lose his fish and his garden because pumping water to a crop really doesn't save the crop. It doesn't do anything for it because you've got to have the atmospheric rain from the skies to benefit crops where you get the electroculture from 
in order for crops to actually benefit. Now, will the water keep them alive? It'll keep it alive. That's all it's going to do. It's not going to benefit it. It'll keep it alive. Now, if I had it pumped up here and had some kind of fertilizer system and had it pumping fertilizer and water into it and all that, yes, I could probably make it grow and make it do wonderful. But what is that going to do to the water in my pond? Any runoff or anything seeping back into the ground, what's all that going to do to my pond? You know what I mean? I have to, you have to, this is a permaculture setup. I have to take every part of it into consideration. I look out here in the woods, no, bad, no matter how bad it gets, those woods never just die. Everything in there never dies, all of it. Some parts of it might die, but those woods have been there since I've been here. And they continue to go on because of permaculture. The land takes care of itself. Nature takes care of itself. Nature weeds out the weak and the strong survive. And that's what we have to do, guys. We have to understand how nature works. In the, the world that we're going into, where they're taking away everything that we've been used to using. See, they got us hooked on stuff back in the turn of the century all the way up till now. They've got us thinking that life has to work this way. We can only raise food this way. We can only garden this way. We can only do this this way. We can only do that that way. And now that we've been so used to that that we don't know any different because it's been lost through generations of not continuing to teach. When they take this away, we think there's no hope. But yet I look at these woods right here behind me and I see they're flourishing green and beautiful and droughts and everything and I'm like, yeah, there's hope because that's still alive. If that's still alive, I can have things alive over here too. So years ago, I took into it, that, all of that into account. I've planted trees strategically everywhere. I've planted fruit-bearing trees. I've planted nut-bearing trees. I have planted things strategically to block the sun um, because I knew the sun was fixing to go into this intensive cycle, especially for the next six years. It's going to be so intense. It's going to be unreal. Guys, you have to think about that stuff. You have to think about nature. Use nature to your advantage. I put ponds in the bottom of the hollers. I put my high tunnels strategically northwest, northeast and southwest behind a huge tall stand of timber. The sun really doesn't hit my high tunnels. It's, uh, it's 8.30 in the morning now, and the sun won't hit my high tunnels for another, probably another hour to about 9.30. It'll hit my tunnels. And from 9.30 till about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, it's on my high tunnels. And at that point, portions of the high tunnel has been in the shade already, but portions of it is not. And inside the high tunnels, the things that can take the more intense heat, I move them into areas where I know the sun's going to be able to hit it longer. Things that can't take the heat, I move them into places where I know they are more in the shaded areas. We have to, guys, it's all about microcultures, uh, microclimates, I guess you might say. Um, it's, it's about finding those microclimates on your property. I've done that over here. When we planted this whole line of the, um, the so-called I mean, uh, Kentucky yellow wax beans, I planted the tall corn in front of it so that when the morning sun comes up, because see, those beans, those pole beans are cool weather plants. And when the intense sun hits them, they're going to drop their blooms. Anything over 85 degrees, let me, let me just say this, anything over 85 degrees, most plants just shed their blooms. And they're not going to put on any fruit. And if they do, it will never be of any quality. So I put the tall corn, because Danny corn grows really tall, I put it there so that the morning sun won't hit them the midday sun will hit them, and then about three o'clock in the evening, two between, I say two o'clock, around because these trees are growing. Around two o'clock, they're back in the shade again. That was all in a plan, and so far, 
If it had not been for me doing that, we would have done lost them because of the drought. Because a lot of them are already shriveling up on the vines. The leaves and the vines are just shriveling up because of a lack of water. But now that it started raining, they're actually beginning to pull out and put on their second crop already. Because the first crop's already been picked and gone. We're ready for the second crop. It's all about learning how to deal with nature. It's all about learning how to survive. Because guys, um, we got bugs flying around here and all this heat. Uh, just remember, we've seen, and I, I always hate to say this, but yeah, I have to say the truth. You know, I, I have to tell you the truth. I can't sit here and sugarcoat something. The big old giant woodpecker. Uh, we have seen the best that we're going to see. From this point forward, I would love to be able to sit here and tell you that because of technology, we're going to be advancing and everything is going to be really great and we're, you know everything that's coming is going to be good. I wish I could tell you that, but I can't. I, I don't have the information that says that that's going to be accurate. All I have is information that says it's going to get worse. And, you know, I want to make a, like, I got I to gotta straighten something up here. I made a misquote on last porch time. It just hit me. I made a misquote, and we didn't really catch it until we done, until we went back and watched Porch Time. Uh, I had said that Iran went to the biometric system, and I, what it was, I've been doing tons of study on Iran, and what's, I, I could tell you some things about that country now. It's like amazing. Uh, it's not Iran that went to the biometric system. It was India, and I'd like to clarify that. Okay, we hadn't got any emails on that. Nobody really sent us any emails saying anything about that. I was really shocked. But um, I just want to clarify that. I did make a mistake about that. Um, I did find out that there's a couple of countries in the world that probably will never be attacked. And Iran could possibly be one of them. And it's amazing what you find out. And, and the reason I say that, Israel wants to attack Iran so bad, but the world keeps suppressing them, saying, no, don't do it, no, don't do it, no, don't do it. Now they go in and they take out little model, you know, little places here and there. But as far as taking the whole country out and nuking them or anything like that, no. Uh, there's actually a weapon that they have there that uh, that they're, they probably nobody ever will because it's 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 it could it could stop the world, you know, and, and everybody knows that. And it's not just Iran. Russia's another place um, that has this particular type of weapon. Wow. You know, I mean, all these two countries have like these trigger weapons. I mean, they're like the end of the world weapons. If, and if certain things don't fall into place, these weapons go off. Everybody on the earth dies. There's no way to get away from it. I mean, and then I wonder when it talks about in the book of Revelation where it says in the latter days of the age, if the Lord didn't shorten time, that even the elect wouldn't even be saved. There'd be nobody left. And, and I wonder, when I see these weapons that's been created, I'm like, Lord, is that what we're talking about here? If you didn't shorten time, that somebody would get really crazy and actually try to attack one of these countries that had that weapon and they release it and the whole earth would die? I mean, is it possible that that's what this is really all about? I mean, I like to ask questions, you know? But guys... Today, I mean, Porsche time has been kind of, I have so much that I'm going through right now trying to sort out, trying to get ready here. Uh, I, I'm telling you, I have, if you don't ever listen to anything I say, this is the one time you need to prepare, 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 grow and continue growing all you can. Uh, go to the stores while it's available right now. Buy everything that you normally would could use. I mean, don't buy stuff you don't use. But food-wise, anything that's in that store you think you can use and you can physically afford to get, get it. Because I promise you, in the very near future, it's not going to be there. 
Because there's a plan. I'm trying to figure if I should say this or not, but there's a plan to make everybody poor. Because if you can make everyone poor and you can raise the price of food so high by creating shortages and breaking down the supply chains that you can usher in, just like they did in India, you can usher in the biometric system and make it where the only way you can afford to get food is if you take this mark And with that mark, you can buy food at a price you can afford. And it's only a certain amount of food. You can't buy just what you want. You just get a certain amount. And the only people that can really afford to just go out and buy are the wealthy people, which they've done, done away with most of. But if you're wealthy, you can buy all you want. But if you're poor, which they want us all to be, then you'll have to have this biometric mark in order to be able to buy the food. And it's already started, guys. Different countries are already using it. Uh, just go study India. Go look up India and look at all that's going on in India. It's there. And I promise you, it's coming to a store in a country near you. Thank you, guys, from Deep South Homestead.